welcome back to Rebel Headquarters, everybody. We're joined now in studio by Ruben Major. Uh, thank you for, for coming in and talking with us. So you are running for uh, California Secretary of State. Yes, sir. Uh, you're launching into the primary. Uh, incumbent is a Democrat, Alex Padilla. And so we're gonna turn to Alex and his record uh, a little bit later on, but um, sort of general level for some people who either have, I mean, obviously states are very different. California Secretary of State, it's a huge state, huge economy. Uh, what are its main responsibilities? What sort of job are you you angling for with this? Uh, the, the Secretary of State is in charge of election systems, mm -hmm. uh, largely in uh, here in California, especially, um, and then also in charge of business filings. And uh, there's uh, the keeper of state archives mm -hmm. and uh, notary publics, notary public mm -hmm. uh, education uh, training programs, and uh, some advanced healthcare directive compliance issues, as well as uh, uh, corporate fraud fund. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty uh, different kind of position. There's a mix of things there. Yeah, uh, the, the definitely the election security is is perhaps the big one. So we're gonna return to that. But um, I was reading a Reddit AMA that you participated in, where you said that you didn't enter into this expecting that you'd be running for Secretary of State at all. It was gonna be state representative. Uh, what made you change your mind? Well, I was actually running for state senate in uh, North San Diego uh, mm -hmm. County, and uh, I was. Uh, Started. Uh, I was running on a platform of uh, single payer healthcare. Now I'm a paramedic. I think that's very important. And uh, getting just dirty money out of politics. Mm -hmm. I'm also not taking uh, any corporate donations at all. Um, important, and, important distinction. Yeah, and and you know I, I started looking at the election related issues uh, because of you know uh, what happened in 2016, both during the primary season and mm -hmm. during the general, and just encountered a slew of uh, issues in the primary across the United States uh, that that were quite concerning to me. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, moreover, when I started investigating our uh, state election systems, I found there to be uh, a great deal of problems here uh, in the state of California. Well, and why, why don't we start there? Really why don't we talk about that? So, yeah. uh, I mean, I think more than most, our audience is, is tuned into some of the historical and present issues with uh, both hacking into the vote, but also you know stuff going missing, huge quantities of votes suddenly disappearing. So, uh, in California, what what actually went down? Well, I would say I would start with there's kind of actually a longer history of what's been going on with our state elections, at least. In 2007, we had Secretary of State Deborah Bowen, who commissioned the largest study ever on voting systems. And what she basically said was that the systems were completely vulnerable and they're ran by huge corporations. And these huge corporations, have, she decertified them. Mm -hmm. And said, you know, you you can't uh, run the election systems anymore until these problems are shored up, and uh, it just kind of sat on hold there. Well, uh, what was concerning was in this report that was given is that it the very first part says if you knew how vulnerable the election mm -hmm. systems were, it would completely undermine your confidence in voting. <laughs> and then I began reading it and I began looking at it just to see uh, you know how bad the systems were and the vulnerabilities were, and it was just getting worse and worse. And, mm -hmm. and I thought, you know, I need to reach even out. even after the decertifying of those particular companies, right? And there was just so many so many other problems. So you know what I did was is I just started going down the report and yeah and and I thought you know we have to do something so I contacted members of Congress I mm -hmm. uh, spoke with the state election officials I uh, you know even reached out to candidates and I said you know that you need to make this part of your platform it, it sounds like it would be a natural part of the right. Secretary of State's platform right so so we have uh, Alex Padilla we had the previous effort that you were de describing um, but with both Alex Padilla and outside of it, I mean, you reached out to them. But what is what has been done? What is currently being done? Well, unfortunately, uh, Alex Padilla uh, supported a, a bill, AB six sixty eight, which was going to give these vendors five hundred million more dollars. Um, and so the ones uh, that hadn't proven themselves to be trustworthy in the first exactly. place. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Well, maybe an influx of money will make them act right. No, <laughs> probably not. So not no. No, okay. they have not proven themselves. Okay, and I think this is a big problem that we have across the country. Mm -hmm. We use the same same machines here that they do use uh, everywhere else. And uh, you know what we like to do is uh, get these corporately owned uh, software out of the election systems, replace them with publicly owned systems, printed paper ballots, and open source software. Yeah, yeah, take take it back. Yeah, so. I mean, how do you feel about the upcoming election? I mean, there's gonna be a lot of races going on in California. How much faith should we have in them? 
Well, I, th I think part of faith uh, in, in lack of voter turnout, um, you know, especially here in this particular state, uh, we do have uh, some of the lowest voter turnout in the country. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of that has to do with just not really understanding um, uh, or people having a, an issue with uh, how uh, the voting systems are actually ran. Mm -hmm. And uh, having confidence in it, and I think if you know we do a real assessment, and you know we tell the voters, and uh, you know, and we say there's problems, and we identify them, and talk about what we can do to fix them. Mm -hmm. Well, repair is probably a better word than fix, but mm -hmm. I would say, uh, you know, what can we do to repair these issues? Then uh, people will be more confident when they're able to read reports and see what's wrong, and know that we're Understand actually what addressing actually the issue. Yeah, yeah, and, and 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 that's what we want. We want transparency in government. We want okay. openness, and I think. I think that's very important. So uh, as I said, I was reading that that AMA and in, in that AMA, they were asking some pretty technical, very specific questions. Uh, so you were talking about, you know, we need to look into this, we need to figure out what we can do, but let's say you win. So what can we do? If you get the seat, you have at least some degree of power over this, uh, what can we actually do? Well, the very first thing that we can do is we can decertify these systems that uh, Alex Padilla uh, unfortunately uh, recertified. Uh, and, and we could decertify them and say, no, they're not gonna work for us. Um, if they've got vulnerabilities and they're not meeting a minimum standard, and I think that the 2007 top to bottom review was a great standard. Mm -hmm. um, if they're not doing that, then you know they're, they're not gonna pass muster and we can't certify them. Yeah. And we need to start advocating for something that's publicly owned. I'll give you an example of why the, another reason why this is a problem. Because uh, DHS actually contacted a vendor here mm -hmm. in California instead of the Secretary of State's office when they had a problem with an election. They went straight uh, to the system. company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we didn't know about it. Yeah, And so I think we need ownership over that code and that software and that information so that we can do what we need to do. Yeah, it's kind of the, I mean, I don't know exactly who is the scary party in that, but if it's an end round around the person who's in charge of it, and it's direct interfacing with the corporation, that sounds like, and, and, and our, you know, our elections are, being determined by this, that sounds like something out of like a cyberpunk movie or something <laughs> like that. So obviously we want a human component, we want the right human there. Um, so one thing in particular, I know there was a lot of concern about how slow the vote count went the last time around. Yeah. Is that is that something we should be worried about? I know that you've been following this quite a lot. Well, I know your um, I, I know that uh, your studio and program um, actually did a story on um, the 2016 primary and some mm -hmm. of the issues surrounding the provisional ballots and uh, the crossover ballots. And I think people being registered for the wrong party, not the party they thought they right. were. Or right, and this is a problem that I've seen, uh, you know, nationwide. I've done a lot of research on this uh, independently just to find out, you know, what was happening uh, before I decided to run even. And uh, you know, they did have a problem in Brooklyn. Where you know we had a couple hundred thousand votes, I believe that you know were hundred thousand. Uh, yeah, um, that's a lot. A big problem. <laughs> yeah. So you know the thing is, is uh, you know we need to secure the voter registration rolls. We need to make sure that you know we're we're adding uh, more enfranchisement, and and I think this uh, process here in California could definitely be shored yeah. up. Uh, with those provisional ballots as well as the mail-in ballots uh, where unfortunately the ACLU is actually suing the current Secretary of State mm -hmm. uh, because uh, minorities are being disenfranchised twice as often as uh, those who are mm -hmm. not. And that's uh, a story we've heard in other parts of the country as well. Yeah, yeah. and that, that's another issue because we're going to more mail-in ballots and those are our voters and traditionally those are progressive voters also. Yeah. So uh, you know we got a lot of work to do there. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, as you're touching on there, obviously we have the security of the actual vote, but then we have the the widespread efforts at voter suppression and and all that stuff. Um, but it'll probably have to unfortunately be our last topic. But I know you you've talked about uh, net neutrality. Now there's this national conversation going on, and there's been some bad developments in that. But what about the possibility of something at the state level? Is if you become Secretary of State, is there a chance that something like that can be set up or at least pushed for? Well, I, th I think we have to try because you know we're at a critical moment in democracy right now, uh, where we're under attack and in mm -hmm. all uh, sorts of different angles. And uh, you know, fortunately, we do have the ability to um, put up some you know stopgap measures here, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to prevent uh, these uh, issues from getting worse. But yeah, I mean, definitely, I'm, I'm an advocate uh, to make sure that the internet is open, free, and fair to everybody. Yeah, and we certainly have a, we're a little bit biased in that. We've well, lost interest because <laughs> being political on the internet, I mean, if somebody's gonna be negatively affected, we, we definitely don't want to see that happen, unfortunately, or uh, fortunately, I should say. Um, so we're running low on time. Uh, where can people find out more information about your campaign, volunteer, donate, that sort of thing? Um, you can go to uh, Ruben Major. 
dot com, and uh, I tell people um, make a major change mm -hmm. uh, because we definitely need <laughs> that right now. And uh, we want to bring a solution to the rest of the country. Uh, basically, we're hoping that uh, by shoring up these issues that we have with our machines and our process, that we can hold other secretaries of state accountable, other states accountable, and make sure that your vote's counting properly. So yeah. you can provide a positive example for Absolutely. other states because these we are should. not problems just for us. We these sure are we're the, we're the tech center of the world. Mm -hmm. Why can't we do this? Yeah, that's a good point. We have Silicon Valley, but we can't secure our own electronic voting systems. There you have. Yeah, let's talk to Elon Musk. Bring him in. Uh, okay, well, thank you very much for joining All us right. in studio. Thank we're you. We're gonna be Appreciate following your it. campaign, and I'm glad to have somebody. Uh, like looking at these issues on a daily basis. Okay, thank you for joining us as always for Rebel Headquarters. We will be back tomorrow with a couple more interviews. I believe Jenk will be hosting at that point, but thank you as always for joining us and we will see you then.